Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss Video. And did you know that in 2005, a 100-year-old man named Frank Shear made news for his water skiing hobby? He first tried the sport in the 1930s, and for his 100th birthday, his son arranged a water skiing-oriented trip to Mexico. When asked about the activity, Frank explained, I just ski for fun, and it's fun out there in the water on a nice day. Anyway, that's the first of many amazing accomplishments of people over the age of 80 I am going to share with you today. In 1983, Taco released his song Puttin' on the Ritz, a cover of the song Irving Berlin wrote in the late 1920s. Berlin was 95 years old when Taco's song reached number four on the Billboard Hot 100, making Berlin the oldest living songwriter ever with a single in the top 10. Between 1977 and 1978, there was an exhibition of Marc Chagall's paintings at the Louvre. At the time, he was about 90, and this was a major accomplishment because he became the first living artist ever to have a Louvre exhibition. Let's move on to some athletes. Johanna Quas currently holds the Guinness World Record for oldest gymnast. She started doing gymnastics at a young age, but took a break until she was 57 and then decided to give it another shot. In April of 2012, she performed a floor and beam routine on an Italian show. She was 86. I literally cannot walk across a balance beam, and I am 36? By late 2014, a woman named Olga Katelko had 26 world records in Masters track and field competitions in the 90 to 95 age category. She competed in events like shot put, javelin, long jump, the 100 meter dash. She retired from teaching in 1984 and decided to pick up track and field at age 77. Similarly, Don Pellman set five track and field world records in his age group. In 2015, he was 100 years old and broke records for the 100 meter dash, high jump, shot put, discus, and long jump. Another man with a record in his age group, Hidekichi Miyazaki, in 2015, on the day after he turned 105, he ran a timed 100 meter dash in 42.22 seconds. I'm not sure that's a dash, but it is a 100 meter run. Anyway, even more impressively, he took up running at age 90. I'm sure this all has you wondering who has the record for oldest person to complete an Ironman triathlon. That's a 2.4 mile swim, a 112 mile bike ride, and then a marathon. The answer is a woman with the nickname the Iron Nun who completed one when she was 82 years old in 2012. Her real name is Sister Madonna Booter, and she started running when she was 48 and did her first Ironman at 55. Between January 1st, 1999 and February 2nd, 2000, Doris Granny D. Haddock of New Hampshire walked across the United States between the ages of 88 and 90. She was an advocate for campaign finance reform in U.S. politics, and she did the walk to raise awareness for her cause. The trip was a total of 3,200 miles, and it ended at the U.S. Capitol. 87-year-old Bruce Hellman did something very similar in 2014, only he did the trip on a Harley-Davidson motorcycle. He traveled from Richmond, Virginia to Fairbanks, Alaska and back, a 10,000 mile trip. The World War II vet also made stops along the way at memorial services and schools to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the end of the war. The oldest person to pass the driving test in the United Kingdom was politician David Renton. He did this in 2003 before turning 95. He'd been driving since the 1930s, but there wasn't a test back then, so he took it later in life. Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. was a Supreme Court justice from 1902 to 1932, and when he retired, he was 90, making him the oldest person to serve on the Supreme Court, at least thus far. There's a few people chasing him, and if I've learned anything from American political life in the last few decades, it's this. Don't count out Ruth Bader Ginsburg. In 2015, a 100-year-old choreographer and dancer named Eileen Kramer starred in her own production at the Independent Theatre in Sydney, Australia. She took up dance at age 24 and performed contemporary dance for years. Her advice for living a long life was this. Try to do creative work, because if you're dealing with creative work, you're doing something new all the time. Or you could try sitting in a stunt glider while it does an upside loop. That's what Nora Hopton from Suffolk, England did when she turned 100. She even got to fly it for a bit alongside her instructor. Before she went up, a reporter asked if she was nervous. She replied, no. I wonder if that's more about being 100 or being the kind of person who gets in stunt gliders. While we're on the topic of planes, though, you might remember Tom Lackey from our episode on Weird World Records. 
Richards, he walked on an airplane wing on his 94th birthday. When he landed, he said, I'm glad to be down. It was rather refreshing, very, very cold, and very, very noisy. Neither of which stopped him from doing it again two days after his 95th birthday. In 2007, Nola Oakes received her bachelor's degree from Fort Hayes State University at the age of 95. This whole thing started when she decided to take a class or two for fun, but eventually she emailed her academic advisor about getting on track for a degree. That advisor even managed to scrounge up a transcript showing that Oakes had taken a class there back in 1930. Just 77 years later, she graduated alongside her granddaughter. And then, at 98, Nola got her master's degree. In 1984, a woman named Doris Self became the world's oldest video game champion after reaching a high score on the game Qbert at the age of 58. Although an older person eventually took her title, Doris kept playing and competing until 2006 when she was 80. You can see her in the documentary The King of Kong, which was also dedicated to her and is one of my favorite movies. An even more obscure fact is that I, John Green, am currently one of the four best players of the game Arrow Fighters in the world. Seriously. But speaking of games, in 2011, 50 stores were selling the award-winning tile game Dabble. It was invented by George Weiss, who was 84 years old at the time. This was his first invention to be brought to the mainstream, but he'd actually created over 80 inventions over the course of his life, everything from convenient storage units to Christmas ornaments. In October of 2015, 100-year-old Minnie Rotundo made headlines for her laundromat. She'd run the family business in Buffalo, New York since the mid-1950s. She had no interest in retirement and worked six days a week. Similarly, Brooklyn math teacher Madeline Scotto celebrated her 100th birthday in 2014. She started teaching elementary school when she was 40 and just kept going. When asked about retirement, she responded, oh, that's a bad word. And in Birmingham, Alabama, mailman Morris Wilkinson was a postman for 71 years until he retired in 2012 at the age of 93. According to his supervisor, Wilkinson was never late, never sick, and formed many bonds with his customers, although he was out for a few months after a car hit his truck. Wilkinson died the next year. Maybe that math teacher is right and retirement is a bad word. To get a little more mainstream, 90-year-old Ann V. Coates co-edited the 2015 film Fifty Shades of Grey. According to Coates, it was kind of fun. I was surprised to be asked to do it. Ah, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey reviewed by its co-editor kind of fun. Speaking of the film industry, the oldest Oscar winners currently are Christopher Plummer, who won for Best Actor in a Supporting Role when he was 82, and Jessica Tandy, who won Best Actress at the age of 80. But don't count out Ruth Bader Ginsburg, starring in Ruth Bader Ginsburg, coming to a theater near you in 2017. And the oldest Nobel laureate so far is Leonid Hurwitz, who won the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences in 2007 when he was 90. That's just one year older than the oldest person to travel to the North Pole, Dorothy Davenhill Hirsch, who made the trip in 2004. Yuichiro Mira has the Guinness World Record for being the oldest man to reach the summit of Mount Everest. He accomplished the feat in 2013 when he was 80. He also climbed it at the ages of 70 and 75. I'm not Nostradamus, but I do know how Yuichiro Mira is going to die. It's too dark. <laughs> But he is, he's gonna die on Everest at the age of 85. It's almost definite. And finally, I returned to my salon to tell you about the oldest person ever on record, a French woman named Jean Calment. She was born in 1875 and died in 1997, making her 122 years old. Thank you for watching Metal Floss Video, which is made with the help of all of these lovely people. I hope you live forever. Well, maybe not forever. I hope you live to be at least 122. Please leave an item on your bucket list in the comments, and as we say in my hometown, don't forget to be awesome.